Vegeta, what does the scouter say about his power level? It's over 9,000! What, 9,000? There's no way that can be right! Down here, salt is a way of life. Obviously, the environment down here is all salt. The, the ceiling's salt, the floor's salt, the walls are salt, and to an extent, the air is salt. And you breathe that in, and you can constantly taste the salt. G'day guys, Mac with the Our Circle, and today, in this episode of Getting Started in Horus Heresy, I'm going to talk a little bit more about Zone Mortalis. Uh, what is Zone Mortalis? Well, essentially, it's all the crazy battle zones in 30k, where inside of ships, sewers, tunnels, uh, fortifications, that kind of thing. It's the close quarters combat that takes place in these narrow, confined spaces. And Zone Mortalis games have a different set of force organization charts and different rules that are applied to them. And we're going to quickly touch off on these. There's a article up on the Warhammer community where this PDF that's currently on screen is located and it gives the latest set of rules for the game. So first things first, there's actually three different force selection charts to pick from. The attacker, whose minimum requirement is a HQ and an elite's choice. There's the defender, who needs a HQ and a troop's choice. And the combatant, which is neither which is a HQ and a troops choice as well. And the difference between the uh, different lists being essentially you can take more troops, less troops, more elites or fast attacks, what have you. Now, this is because games are a thousand points aside or less generally, but I've played games pretty consistently in Australia of about 1200 points. And in fact, it even says on the left hand side, uh, what size, and if you're playing 500 points or less, they suggest only a 2x2 two two table. Interesting. So, there are different things that you can do to uh, modify your lists, but essentially the restrictions are, as listed on screen, you can't have a dedicated transport, no unit is allowed to be bigger than 15 models starting size, so that's before characters or attachments like above the carries join the units. No vehicles other than walkers may be chosen unless their models are no more than four inches wide. Now, the way I read this, technically you could take something like a land speeder, but I really think it's kind of going against the uh, concept of this sort of thing. I think something like a Goliath, um, the little tanks that blow up, yeah, one of those would be fun, but uh, no flies or flying monstrous creatures of any kind or size may be taken. This is a huge restriction for Demons of the Ruin Storm, uh, and because I don't really like Demons of the Ruin Storm rules as they currently are implemented, they have a lot of flaws um, with the fact that you know you can place down your templates for example and you may be restricted to put them in one area and it may block off the entire table, things like that. It's We're just not going to cover them today, I'm sorry, until the rules are fixed there's no point in that. And no model mounted on a base large than 60 millimeters may be chosen. I think it's important to note there that people shouldn't just go basing Leviathan Dreadnoughts on 60 millimeter bases. Again, I think it kind of goes against the spirit of things. Now, as for Warlords, that sort of thing is all done as usual and is only used in games over 500 points. And it's fine. I don't even think it's really a problem below 500 points. Uh, other than that, a lot of that is done as usual. Now, there's different terrain in it, and doors and that kind of thing. Not really super important to you because all you need to know is it's there. They only have like a single hull point. They're only armor 13. It's not that easy. Uh, sorry, it's not that difficult to break them down as long as you've got a weapon that's able to do damage. So, <laughs> um, sort of some of the key points yeah no barrage weapons if you do have a weapon though that uh has a frag explosion such as a frag missile launcher if it scatters and hits the walls in the terrain it automatically detonates at that point and it doesn't scatter any further this means that using frag weaponry is really really effective Downside is, of course, no barrage weaponry, so things like quad mortar rapiers, that kind of thing, aren't going to be allowed. Yeah, I know, cry every time. 
Uh, your terrain effects are very important, so we're going to quickly look at those. Bikes, jet bikes, artillery, cavalry, and walkers treat all difficult terrain they encounter within Zone Mortalis as dangerous terrain as well. Unless you're me and you play White Scars, in which case, fuck you, not a problem. Uh, should any of them use Turbo Boost, they must take a dangerous terrain test regardless of the ground they cover. This overrides any normal rules they possess to the contrary. So, that will affect the White Scars. All models classed as Jump Infantry or Flying Monstrous Creatures, which move more than 6 inches in the movement phase, must take a dangerous terrain test every time they do so. Now, that's interesting because it says all flying monstrous creatures, but as you read in the previous paragraph, flying monstrous creatures are not allowed at all in Zone Mortalis. So, a slight editing error there, we'll say. Flyers may not enter a Zone Mortalis, except if using hover mode, as they are then classed as skimmers. But again, what the fuck are they doing there? <laughs> because you're not allowed to have flyers or flying monstrous creatures. Uh... All other vehicles, including skimmers, treat a zone mortalis as both difficult terrain and dangerous terrain in its entirety. Infantry, monstrous creatures, and beasts treat a zone mortalis as they would any other battlefield where specific areas of difficult terrain and dangerous terrain are encountered. They are subject to their effects, and otherwise the zone mortalis is treated as clear ground. Wrecked vehicles are both difficult terrain and dangerous terrain if destroyed in a zone mortalis area. Now, reserves and deep striking. These are similar but different. So, any unit that deep strikes, if you go into a wall, it's really, really bad. On a one or a two, your unit is just going to be destroyed because you subtract an additional minus one from your deep strike mishap. Basically, if you don't have a teleport homer or a no scatter deep strike, definitely do not deep strike, especially if there are custodes with RA shrikes in the area. You're gonna have a bad time. Alright. Uh, there are different stratagems uh, that you can buy. Most people tend to not play with them. Uh, if you're playing something like a narrative campaign, it can be pretty fun to have these stratagems. I find it's just you forget that you've got them or forget to use them. Uh, so I don't really take them. And nobody I know really takes them. They'd rather just spend the points and such uh, on something else to boost their army. And that's if they even remember. Uh, the Firestorm and Shrapnel rules, as I was explaining, blasts and templates, they just automatically hit the sides of the thing uh, they automatically gain shred there are certain rules here that are up to you to choose whether you implement or not uh, one of the ones that may be uh, a choice to implement would be that all attacks of strength 4 and higher count as rending and attacks that are already rending uh, count as rending on a 5 plus unless you're wearing void hardened armor or armor that has a 2 up armor save or you're a vehicle with an armor greater than I think 12. Anyway, those are optional rules. Reaction fire is a common one that people use, which is if you overwatch, you roll an initiative check. If you pass the initiative check, then you get to overwatch at full ballistic skill. Very, very handy. Uh, that's some of the most important stuff. The Zone Mortalis, again, optional thing is the terrain collapsing. This is not going to affect your list construction at all. So, again, I'm not going to cover off on it too much. Cold Void and Poisoned Air is the rule that affects your Void Hardened Armor. And then, there, of course, there are a couple of missions. Uh, most of the missions, you essentially deploy half your army in the Zone Mortalis game on the edge of the board. Uh, the edge that they're deployed on is randomized uh, to a degree. You usually end up with two edges to pick from, and your opponent also gets the opposite two edges of the table to pick from. And most of your reserves will come from those directions, because obviously only half your army is starting on the board. So, with all this in mind, let's actually take a look at some units now, and we'll go through some of the things I think are worth taking. So, the Legion Vigilator, or possibly also the Saboteur option for the Alpha Legion, good choices to take. Uh, with the scouting ability, that kind of thing, different types of ammunition, sabotage attacks, they have a kind of... Uh, they bring a bit to the tape when it's own Mortalis. 
The thing is though, firepower will only get you so far when the average corridor is only maybe 12 inches in size. Uh, lengthwise, sometimes you get uh, one that goes from one end of the tail to the other. In military terms, we call that a fire lane because anything that walks into it is probably going to die, so you don't really want to be in it if you can avoid it. Uh, the Legion Pravian, strong because he can take Castellax. Castellax or Vorax are both very strong in Zone Mortalis because they're able to cover ground quickly, and of course they do a ton of damage and they're hard to take down. The Moritat, on the other hand, a lot less useful, unless it's someone like Kytus Nex, the Raven Guard special character, they're probably not worth taking in Zone Mortalis. Uh, you're not going to get anything out of having a jump pack on them unless you like making dangerous terrain rolls, which, okay, with Artivisa armor is doable, but you're not going to get a huge amount of shooting off uh, with your Moritats before they're absolutely swarmed and devoured by something. Tech Marines, solid choice. Uh, Tivsa armor, rad grenades, uh, being accessible to them, that kind of thing. Good, solid choice, especially if you're taking a Forge Lord, uh, Master of the Forge, as the HQ console option. Perfectly good. Uh, the Champion, very choppy with the Paragon Blade. A great low points way of getting some killing power in. They can kill things like Terminators at initiative before they strike. But the Master of Signals is really let down in Zone Mortalis. He's unable to use his Large Blast, as it's a barrage weapon. And yes, whilst he can give plus one ballistic skill to units, he's not going to be using that ability very often, or at least often enough in my opinion, to justify paying the over 100 points for the character. And also considering he's really restricted on the Legion war gear he can take, he can't take things like uh, Power Fists or Terminator armor, that kind of thing. It really handicaps and gimps him. Things like Apothecaries, of course, Primus Medicaids, they're always great, you can't go wrong. Uh, your bread and butter is not going to be Tactical Marines generally in Zone Mortalis, it's going to be Breaches. Breaches are kings, because all the nasty blast templates that appear in Zone Mortalis are largely negated by the ability to reroll failed armor saves against them, unless of course it's something like a Plasma Cannon, which is brutally strong in Zone Mortalis, let's face it. But a Breacher Squad backed up by an Apothecary, and if you're playing something like Imperial Fist and their Stone Gauntlet, are just ungodly tough to move. And they're great in every Legion. Thousand Suns, for example, can be using Breachers with plus one invulnerable saves. So you're looking at four up invulnerable saves in close combat, five up outside of it, on regular Space Marines that are only going to cost you around 200 points a squad. Very strong. Uh, don't take the Laz Cutter either, it's a terrible weapon. Destroyers, uh, yeah, on foot they're okay. Uh, in fact, I'd say they're very good in Zone Mortalis. Uh, the Rad Missile is going to be very effective. Uh, the Bolt Pistols, the Rad Grenades, they're going to be pretty solid in close combat. I really don't think they need the Moritad to add extra killing power to them. I think on their own they're plenty viable. If you're going to be taking them though, take a squad of 10 with two of the Rad Missile launches, or don't take any Rad Missile launches at all. One on its own is just not good enough, but two is un godly strong. Uh, assault Marines, again, stay away from that sort of thing. You're just going to be making unwanted, dangerous terrain checks. You'd be better served by taking regular tactical Marines with a chainsword if you're that way inclined. Legion Recon Squad, again, uh, their benefit is ranged firepower. They're not going to be able to employ it effectively in Zone Mortalis, therefore not worth you really taking as far as infantry go. Of course, the big thing that you're not seeing right now on this page, because they've all moved over to Games Workshop's web store, is Legion Terminators. Now, you always have the choice of your own brand of Legion Terminators, because I think every Legion has their own kind. Your Sekhmet, your uh, Crimson Paladins, your Phoenix Terminators, whatever. The hard choice is picking, do you go with something like Cataphracty Armor, or do you go with something like Tartarus Armor? And... Okay, the survivability of Cataphracty uh, usually doesn't overwhelm the need for more mobility. Now, Zone Mortalis, mobility isn't as crucial because it's a smaller battlefield. However, if your models are coming on later in the game from reserve, it is a crucial thing and you're going to need to be able to run. You're not going to be able to do that with Cataphracty, so you have to decide where your priorities lie. Now, the one thing that will help you with your list construction is if you're the defender or if you're the attacker because being an attacker, you're getting an elite's choice as your primary 
uh, force organization choice for your army. And therefore, yeah, you could take a squad of Terminators there and they're going to be a scoring choice if they're Legion Terminators. Uh, not all Legion-specific Terminators, which is your Crimson Paladins, your Phoenix Terminators, your Grave Wardens, are, however, scoring. Not all of them are. So there's a choice there in, in if you take them in the elite slot. And of course, some like the Siege Tyrants are heavy support choices. Uh, but it does mean if you play that particular list, you may not necessarily have to spend a troops tax of some kind to buy, say, Tactical Marines, for example. And even if you did have to pay a troops tax playing, say, a Defender list, you only need to pay one troops tax, which gives you a bit more uh, versatility with the points available to you with what you take. Uh, Salamanders are one of the tougher ones in this regard because they're Terminators with Storm Shields are rock solid, as are Imperial Fist ones. The Salamanders also bring super strong flamethrowers. If there's one thing you want in Zone Mortalis games, it's template weapons. Being able to overwatch with templates, things like heavy flamers uh, and regular flamers, if you can bring something like Havoc missile launchers on your Dreadnoughts, really strong stuff. Speaking of Dreadnoughts, Dreadnought weaponry. Volkite culverins are very good because the amount of firepower they put out However, in Zone Mortalis, they are somewhat gimped again by being unable to utilize their range. Contemptor uh, conversion beamers, same problem again. The conversion beamer needs long range to function best, so not really worth taking in a ZM game. The close combat hands uh, on Dreadnought. A fist, a regular power fist and a chain fist is a fantastic choice all the time. Uh, in fact, in Zone Mortalis, just to be certain, sometimes two chain fists. Now, I normally suggest putting a Graviton gun in the hand of your Dreadnought, uh, which is you know, a very solid choice, because, well, it's able to knock hull points off the enemy Dreadnoughts. And the downside here, of course, is you're going to have to deal with enemy infantry the old-fashioned way with the old walk up and smash them to bits with your fists and step on them with your feet. But the Graviton allows you to knock hull points off enemy Dreadnoughts, which means that they're less likely to be able to cause uh, your own Dreadnought to be destroyed if you end up in a one versus one assault with them. And of course, they're a great way of slowing down enemy units by creating difficult, dangerous terrain patches. So just something to think about there. Las Cannons, Auto Cannons, same thing, gimped by the lack of range. The Multi Melter is a good option. But again, keep in mind, it's taking away a range, uh, sorry, it's taking away a close combat option, and you're going to want close combat options. The Contemptor Cyclone Missile Launcher, of course, is a Havoc Missile Launcher for 30k players. The close combat arm with, say, a Plasma Blast Gun is a good choice if you're fighting enemy heavy infantry, but again, it's not doing much more than what your fists can't already do. You may knock down a few numbers prior to charging in, something like that. I don't necessarily know, though, that it's worth it. Plus a lot of points. Uh, heavy Bolters. I believe the Dark Angels Dreadnoughts can take the Acid to Heavy Bolters, in which case they're terrifying. Um, Iron Warriors could take Shrapnel Heavy Bolters, but I really wouldn't suggest it. Uh, Plasma Cannon, actually a very strong choice now, because, okay, you're gimped by range, but the fact is you're not going to be scattering off your target very often. Unless it directly goes up a hallway, it's usually just going to hit the wall and stop right there, and blast will radiate out from that point. The Kiri's Assault Cannon, again, same problem as the Volkites. Yes, you have a lot of firepower. If someone walks around the corner last second on your Dreadnought and you don't get a chance to use it, well, it's no help to you at all, is it? But a Contempt Dreadnought or even a Box Dreadnought is a very good choice here. And the box dreadnoughts, ignoring the 40k redemptors and such, and derpy looking space walls ones, box dreadnoughts are able to bring heavy flamers, and especially on the right arm, a flamestorm cannon. Now, a good way out for a box dreadnought, which makes it terrifying in Zone Mortalis, is a flamestorm cannon, a havoc missile launcher, a chain fist or siege wrecker arm, and a heavy flamer. That's probably my ideal box dreadnought loadout, but it is expensive. It's coming up on a similar price to regular Contemptor Dreadnoughts, which are, of course, superior in every way. Weapon skill, ballistic skill, armor, in invol save, all that stuff is something you've got to take into consideration. Contemptors also have fleet. Contemptor Cortices can overcharge their reactors for extra attacks or better movement. 
so all things to keep in mind. But of course the Flamestorm Cannon, the bread and butter of the Box Dreadnought, so, so strong. The ability to walk around a corner and just deny armor saves to anything in power armor is so terrifying and so good. It feels great when you do it. Even something like Mechanicum Myrmidons, which are normally quite strong in 30k meta, uh, you hit a tight group of those, you do something like 8 wounds to them, chances are you're going to start just knocking them off like flies. So, something to think about. Uh, speaking of the Mechanicum, let's quickly look into the Mechanicum. So, you're not going to get your Thanatars. You're going to have your Thalax, you're going to have your Hoplites, you're going to have your Domitar. Domitar are brutally strong now uh, with their special Graviton Flamer hands. Uh, they will destroy Dreadnoughts. Absolutely wreck Dreadnoughts. But, of course, three Domitar, strong as they are, is going to fill up so much of your points so quickly because they're something like 170 points each base. Uh, of course, they're not going to have to fork out for the flak missiles, which is nice. Um, but your Domitar forces, yeah, they're um, they're terrifying. I, I genuinely am afraid of facing them in Zone Mortalis, because the normal stuff you can use to defeat something like Castellax, for example, which would be a Dreadnought, yeah, you can't charge these. You need to tie these up first with something like regular Space Marines, Terminators and then charge it with the Dreadnought or else the Dreadnought is going to be copying uh, 2d3 Haywire hits from each Domitar on the charge. You do not want this. Now the Arch Magos on a band, very strong option. Uh, you won't be taking your Magos Macrotech Engine Seer and his Servo Automata. It's just not worth it to you. Forax, brutally strong, they're fast, they've got good firepower, they're very choppy in close combat, and they're pretty cheap too. Uh, the Myrmidons, Destructors, great, they have a lot of firepower if they're running with Irad. Oh boy. Absolutely terrifying to anything that's not a Dreadnought. Because it's just Flesh Bane and low AP and all the nasty stuff. Uh, Castellax, Castellax are always great. Uh, the only downside of Castellax is they're not a scoring uh, choice. Um, you know, that is a problem. Uh, the Mermid Insecutors, yeah, they're pretty good as well, because again, a choppy option is always preferable. Uh, in fact, that's one of the things I really rate about the Thalax. The Ursarax, again, another choppy option, but you're not going to be getting the most out of their mobility because of the restrictions that have been put on you with the scenario. The Silax, still not great. Their points is just too inefficient. Thralls are a great way, though, to fill up your troop slots uh, effectively and have scoring units, uh, freeing up the points for things like the Domitar, which, again, I think are probably your best bang for your buck if you're playing in a Zone Mortalis. As for weapons, mm, Phase Plasma Fusel is quite good. Photon Thruster, it's okay. I'd probably go with the Multi Melter though, so your Thalax, if they get ambushed by something like a Dreadnought, can take it down successfully. Alright, Militia, Militia, Militia. This is a tough one because a lot of what Militia brings to the board is just a shitload of bodies, but the restriction on unit sizes really handicaps them. I suggest being. Uh, being such a weak army, you really want to invest in things with special weapons and ogrims, essentially. Uh, maximize the amount of melter and plasma and flamer you can bring. And to really uh, exaggerate the point, the solar auxilia. If you're playing Zone Mortalis, you want to have solar auxilia flamer section, for sure. Uh, only thing is, though, they're a non compulsory troops choice. So perhaps take something like Valataris with Power Axes as a troop's choice. Uh, so a Valataris Storm section with Power Axes, a Sol Auxilia Flamer section, of course a Tactical Command unit of some description, take some Apothecaries to sprinkle around, or the Sol Auxilia Medics, and load as many Charonite Ogrens as you can into the list, and then laugh, laugh, laugh. And of course, because you can take an option of some Mechanicum units in the Force, also consider that as like the little cherry on top if you don't want to go the Ogrens. But Ogrens are terrifying in Zone Mortalis because this army is built for Zone Mortalis. 
whilst normally the Laz Rifles are really good in the open table with the ability to overcharge them up to strength 6, you don't get a chance really to fire much with them in Zone Mortalis and you're limited on squad sizes. So, I'd be going Flamers, uh, the Valataris with Axes, and the Charonite Ogrens, and Medics, and just as many Ogrens as I can get, because again, it's absolutely terrifying. Alright, lastly the Custodes and Sisters, because Knights, you're not playing ZM, and as I said, I'm not going to cover the uh, Demons of the Ruin Storm. Uh, if I was to give any Demons of the Ruin Storm pointers, it would be just load up on Brutes and cavalry really not going to get any really good creatures in because they're just too big a base uh veldor well yeah okay the venatari squad yeah you're not going to get your bang for your buck out of your jump packs uh the sagittarium lack of range hampers you you can't take your telemon aqualon terminators with the fire pikes devastating with the uh, Draythic weapons, no, I would probably avoid them. <laughs> uh, if you're going to take Talons or Gauntlets for your Solarite weapons on the Terminators, totally up to you. But again, Terminators are always strong, but Terminators who single models can block uh, hallways, take them in small squads, really strong for the Custody players. Uh, for some reason, it's not showing all the Dreadnought options. For the Legio Custodes. Let's see if I can fix that. There we go. Uh, Contemptor Achilles and Galatus are both really good. Uh, in this instance, though, I'd probably be more tempted to go with the Galatus because it is, well, it has a strong flamer weapon built into its sword um, and it has the better invulnerable save. But of course, the other attempt at uh, Contemptor, the Achilles, has the wrist mounted weapons, and they're pretty good as well. So, uh, and it has those D attacks on the charge, so there's a lot of good options here available to you, but again, Galatus, I think, is the way to go, and Aqualon Terminators, and of course, just your regular Custodians in there. Uh, with the Sisters of Silence, you really want to be going for the sword armed sisters of silence as opposed to the bolters because you're just not going to get your money's worth out of bolters whereas the ability to chop people up with power swords is always a valued commodity and of course sisters armed with flamers are also a fantastic option the bolt pistols less so uh if you run into someone in zone mortalis you've basically got that turn to end it or else you're probably going to get butt fucked from another direction so Anyway, I hope this is a helpful little things to look at if you're going into Zone Mortalis for everyone. Obviously, I didn't get too specific on the different legions. Obviously, word bearers, uh, Marigal Dreadnoughts are probably the nastiest thing in all of Zone Mortalis. They're definitely an option for you to take. Um, nobody's taking Primarchs because they're a Lord of War, and you only have a thousand points, so you cannot take a Lord of War below two thousand points. And a Lord of War can't take up more than a quarter of your points anyway. Of course, there are exceptions like certain rights of war, but we won't go into those because they're not fitting in with the real uh, heart of 30k. So, those are my suggestions to people. Flamers, good. Things that kill power armor, great. Uh, blast weapons, great. People that are able to put down other people who have two up armor saves, great. Being able to stop enemy vehicles, uh, specifically dreadnoughts or having a plan and a capability across most of your force to deal with dreadnoughts great if you don't bring these things to a zone mortalis game you're probably going to lose the game so keep that in mind anyway i'm mac with the outer circle thank you all for watching this episode of getting started in horus heresy and i'll see you all next time